Hey guys, how you doing? Locks and load here. Uh, today's video concept, I'm going to be talking about how to set up your AR-15 rifle for a home defense. My last video I did the shotgun. Uh, I've gotten you know, positive views from it, people who like the shotgun. And a lot of people who said they like the AR-15. So for this, I'm going to show you guys how to set up your AR-15 to suit your house. Now, everyone's house is different. I'm kind of going off of my house. So, the way I have my rifle set up is that, again, I'm in a house, I'm not shooting anything further than seven yards. So I do not need no one by four or magnifier, just a simple red dot, get the job done. I got one of these, a laser light combo. Sorry, that's a little bright. I think Having a flashlight on your rifle really benefits the situation to better help see clearly when you're clearing your room because a lot of times when people have break-ins is at night. So when you're going through your house, you want to have that light to readily identify your target. You don't want to shoot an innocent family member or one of the neighbor kids who are just running through your backyard. You want to shoot the person who's intended to be shot. So make sure you get yourself a nice light on your rifle. As far as a laser, do you need a laser? No. I just like to have a light laser combo to have both capabilities on my rifle and it's one small package so I'll have a number of things hanging off my rifle adding weight. I have a nice foregrip so I can get nice and tight in my rifle because again we're in the house. We're not long range. I don't need one of these. Some nice to get me nice and tight to help me maneuver the corners very easily. Whereas we have our wall, you know, I can come across that wall and I can come around very easily with this foregrip. It gives me a nice grip under the rifle, just like the pistol grip, to hold that rifle steady. So I come up on my wall and I peel out. Now I acquired my target and I fire. All right, so another thing you want to take into consideration is how is your sling, if you have one of your rifles, set up? This comes into consideration when, especially when you are coming up on a wall and you have to peel out to take a shot, and especially if you have to switch hands, peel out around a corner and take a shot. That's where your sling comes in, uh, setup comes very important. I have my sling set up to here as a single point, my little dual sling attachment. I have it that way because when the sling is attached to your buttstock, the here to the front of the rifle, and you have to transition the slings up here, well now, see, now you're being choked. You can't do that transition. So you have to add the step of taking your sling off entirely, then switching hands, acquiring your target, and firing. And whereas if you had it <coughs> set up or you can switch hands immediately. Come up on your wall, switch hands, and you peel out. Bang, bang, and you come back. And whereas if you switch again, let's say it's in the left hand, you switch. And you can peel out around that corner a lot easier, being able to switch your rifle uh, from one shoulder to the other that much uh, quickly without having to take off your whole sling and your whole assembly and then switch hands and acquire your target. All right, a lot of house break-ins happen at night. You know, people are normally gone or sleeping and you know, you can't see as easily as broad daylight if someone's sneaking up on your house. So having a nice light on your Rifle to help see in that dark to help you acquire your target so you don't hit somebody that doesn't need to be hit really comes in handy and I think it is extremely beneficial and is a necessary fixture on your rifle. So as you see, we have our office setting. It's dark. There'd be someone hiding here, but with my flashlight, I can see. And then I have my laser too. I don't know if you can see it. Let 
but yeah. So having a flashlight on your rifle really helps you see in the dark and acquire your target. And again, when it comes to defensive shooting, you own every round that you fire. So you don't want any shots going off in the distance, going through someone's window or hitting somebody that doesn't need to be hit because it's going to come back and it's going to come to bite you in the ass. So again, make sure your rifle is set up to help benefit you and the needs you need in your house. All right, so let's talk sights. For home defense, I think the best sight that you can get is a red dot sight. It, red dots are meant for quick target acquisition and close quarters combat. Just right there, put the dot on them, fire. Uh, as far as these 1x4 scopes, which I do have, I do not recommend those for home defense because you're in a house, you're not shooting 100 yards, 200 yards. You don't need all that. A nice simple red dot, keep it simple and efficient. A nice light, keep it simple and efficient. I have here a Vortex Spark AR red dot. Paid $130-something dollars for it. So it's cheap, effective, durable, reliable. Uh, accurate, you know, taking it to uh, classes, taking it to range, thought shot hundreds of rounds through it, holds a zero, is on target, and you know, it's $139, so it's cheap and uh, fits in your budget, and it helps you acquire your target that much quicker than with iron sights. So, when you are setting up your home defense rifle, take stock into what type of sight am I using on my rifle? What sight do I need to benefit me and the personal protection of my house? And of course, my financial situation. If you cannot afford a $400 aim point, all right, there are plenty of other great red dot or other scopes out there for a lot cheaper than aim points that work just as fine. Uh, so one of the biggest proponents to a successful home defense situation is practice. In your house, you don't have to go to the range, practice. Find you a suitable shooting stance, feet shoulder width apart, square it off your target, shoulder in your arm, your, well, shoulder in your arm, rifle in your shoulder, come up, hold the target, down. Practice those snap twos. Those really come in handy. Also, so once you get done with your snap twos, you got your sights on target, magazine change. However you carry your magazines, I got a back pocket of my jeans. I do have a vest and a battle belt. So if you have a vest and you want to practice with your vest, put your vest on, practice mag changes. If you have a belt, practice with your belt. If you just have it in your back pocket like I do, then practice like that. That's why we practice. You don't want that to happen in the middle of a gunfight. Alright, so I want to keep the video quick. I talked about having a light on your rifle to help you identify targets. Talked about having a proper sight to again identify targets and to help you get on target. I talked about having your sling set up. So when you have to peel around corners and switch arms, you can do this so effectively, efficiently without having to take off your sling, and then switch arms. Talked about, uh, you know, magazine changes. 
how to peel around corners. Uh, really, guys, it really boils down to you. I, I can't come up with every scenario. You guys have to look into your house and your situation and the way it is set up and build off of that. You have to practice yourself. I, I can't do all the training for you. I can just give you guys some helpful tips to consider when you guys are thinking about what should I do with my AR-15 or what kind of gun should I get for home defense or what should I do to protect myself during a home defense situ uh, situation. Sorry. So... Again, guys, take stock of your inventory. Look at what you do have, what you don't have, what you need to have. When you have free time in your house, practice. Just pick up your rifle. Practice. When you get free time, go around your house. Clear your house. Just practice. Practice practice that's like that's it that's all that's how these pros get good anyways they just practice practice and practice continuously when you have free time just go through your house peel around your corners get a feel for your house find out where are your where are the angles that you can hide from that you can see but they cannot readily see you where are the dark areas in your house that you can hide or a suspect can hide? Where are the areas that afford you the most protection in your house but affords your intruder, the suspect, the least amount of protection? Which situation helps benefit you to help you win? And that's what you guys have to consider when you're thinking of these home defense situations and scenarios. So I don't want to get too off topic. That is the AR-15 and how I set up my AR-15 for home defense. Uh, again, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something, which is why I make these videos. So I want you guys to learn something. I want you guys to look at what I'm doing and then ask yourself, what is it that I am doing at home? What is it that I could be doing? How can I make myself more of a proficient shooter and homeowner, home uh, gun owner, uh, home protector? And I want you guys to ask yourselves those questions. Uh, so this is the AR-15, how I set it up. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you learned something. And as always, guys, stay safe. Locks and loadouts.